Now, when it comes to buying a new smartphone, there are several factors that you need to consider. Price is probably a really important one, and depending on the subscription that you get from your carrier and so on. But once you get beyond that, there are what? Well, there's the camera, there's a display, the chipset it uses, the amount of internal storage it has, and the amount of RAM that it has. Now, the amount of RAM you can get in an Android smartphone varies greatly, and it's often dependent on the cost of the device. But that leads us to the question, how much do you really need? How much do you actually need to actually use your Android smartphone day to day? Well, in this video, I wanna answer that question. So if you wanna find out more, please, let me explain. Now, the first thing, of course, we all know is that smartphones come in all different shapes and sizes. And this is also true of RAM. So, for example, in May of 2024, so not that long ago, six months ago or so, Xiaomi released the Redmi A3X and it came with only three gigabytes of RAM. Motorola recently updated the Moto G range. So that was in January 2025, four gigs of RAM. Now, obviously, these are aimed at particular markets. The prices are lower than flagship devices, but there are Android devices shipping today in 2025 with only three or four gigs of RAM. At the other end of the spectrum, Samsung have recently announced the Galaxy S25. The S25 Ultra, for example, uh, can have up to 16 gigs of RAM. The OnePlus 13 uh, that was launched in only November of 2024, in some markets, if you have a terabyte of internal storage, I think it is, you can get 24 gigs of RAM. So huge variety in how much RAM there is available. Now, know how much RAM you've got in your device is important, but there are some more things that we need to discover. Now, Android is a multitasking preemptive operating system based on the Linux kernel. Now, when you talk about RAM, there's a difference between the total amount of RAM, the used RAM, the free RAM, and the available RAM, so lots of different uh, terms there. And that's because Linux uses uh, virtual memory, so each app has a virtual address space. And if you want to understand more about that, I've got videos about that, so I'll leave links to those in the description below. Now, know how much RAM you've got in your device is important, but there are some more things that we need to discover. Now, Android is a multitasking preemptive operating system based on the Linux kernel. Now, when you talk about RAM, RAM, there's a difference between the total amount of RAM, the used RAM, the free RAM, and the available RAM. So lots of different uh, terms there. And that's because Linux uses uh, virtual memory. So each app has a virtual address space. And if you want to understand more about that, I've got videos about that. So I'll leave links to those in the description below. And when your app is loaded into RAM, it's loaded into pages, blocks in that memory. And those pages can be taken in and out of RAM using a thing called swap space. So use RAM is the memory that's currently occupied by running processes, applications, and of course, the operating system itself. It includes active programs, background tasks, and, and here's the important thing, and that cache data, data that's being used for the disk cache. Now, some of this memory, that, that cached memory, can be reclaimed if needed. But at the moment, it's being used. It, it is marked as used RAM. Now, free memory is completely unused, not allocated at all by the OS, not for an application, not for a background task, not for any disk I.O., no caching of any kind. It's just completely empty. Now, available RAM is the total memory that can be used when you launch a new app, when you take what's in free RAM and also what you can reclaim from used RAM. So if, you know, megabytes of memory are being used to... Uh, you, for disk caching, the cache can be emptied, the it can be written to the disk, or it can be dis discarded if it's a read cache, and then that memory now becomes available for the new app. So that's the difference between used RAM, free RAM, and available RAM. So when you launch an app on your smartphone, the first thing that happens is a Linux kernel together with Android says, right, we need some space to put this. If there is some actually free RAM not allocated to anything, it will just get put into that space. However, if there is not actually unallocated RAM available, but there is RAM that's being used for other things, let's say like a disk caching, then it will clear out the caches and say, right, now I've got a big enough chunk of RAM, I'm gonna put the app into there. Now, even after clearing all the caches, if there's not enough space, it has no choice but to eject an existing app 
from the uh, memory. So you've been playing, you know, let's say a game and then you switch over to a social media app and then you think, oh, I better launch uh, something else. So you launch another application and then there's not enough room. So it says, well, what I do, well, I have to get rid of, well, let me get rid of that game that he was playing because he hasn't played that for a little while. So I'm going to get rid of that. And what actually happens is all Android apps are written in a way that they know that at any moment they can be uh, thrown out of RAM. And there's an, a, a life cycle where the app knows it's been started up, it knows it's been paused, it knows it's about to get destroyed and so on. And if you're an Android programmer, that's all second nature. You know exactly how that's meant to be. And so apps don't get upset when they get quickly kicked out of RAM. That's actually how they're designed. So it will go down the list of what you've not used for a while. Say, right, that app there hasn't been used for a while, kicks it out of memory. That then frees up enough space for you to put in the new app, to load up the new app that you've just started. That's why sometimes when you're cycling through apps using the recent lists of tasks, sometimes when you go to them, they restart again. And the reason they restart again is because at some point it was actually ejected from RAM. Now, actually with Android, the, the amount of RAM you have really, what it mainly, mainly affects is how often apps have to restart. So how many apps can you hold simultaneously in RAM before one of them gets kicked out? Now, at the low end, that's going to be one, two, three, four kind of apps. At the high end, you're talking like 10, 20 apps, depending on the apps that you're using and so on. Okay, so here is a very small selection of some phones that, uh, that I've uh, been able to get access to to find out how much available RAM there is when you first switch on the device and you let it start up for a few minutes obviously so going back to the asus rog phone 7 that comes with 16 gigs now these numbers here 16 gigs uh, 12 gigs actually there might be 11.5 or or something like that once the memory map has been sorted out by the hardware but this is the rounded up number 16 gigs of ram running on android 14 so there's 6.5 gigabytes of available ram so nine gigabytes or so is actually being used by Android and by the background tasks and any apps that I've installed uh, and so on uh, when you first turn it on. Now the OnePlus 9 Pro has got 8 gigs of, of, of RAM, again running Android 14 and 5.5 available and neither of those two devices have any swap space configured. The Pixel 7 Pro comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM, Android 15 in this case, and only 4.4 gigabytes available. So, uh, you know, it's got less RAM here than the OnePlus 9 Pro and actually less available. But it's got three gigabytes of swap space. Now, each of these manufacturers, Asus, OnePlus, Google, Samsung, they all decide how they want to configure these apps, what pre-installed apps is going to be, how much they want uh, available uh, to be on swap. And also it's something that all these devices handle on a per phone basis. The Pixel 9, 12 gigabytes of RAM, Android 14, 4.5 gigabytes available RAM when you first turn it on, but five gigabytes of swap. Now, the really interesting one is the Pixel 9 Pro comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM and there's only 2.3 gigabytes of available RAM. So look at that. You get 16 gigs, much, much more than these previous three phones here, and yet only 2.3 gigabytes of available RAM when you switch it on, and there's 8 gigabytes of swap configured. Why? Because the Pixel 9 Pro does local AI stuff. It runs uh, Gemma Nano, and it preloads that into memory when you boot up the phone. We'll talk more about that again uh, in a moment. And the Galaxy S24 Plus, 12 gigabytes, 5.6 gigabytes available to RAM, 8 gigabyte swap. So you can see that, you know, on a phone like this, on this last one, you've got 5 gigs that is literally uh, going to be available for starting a new app. Now, the question is, how much does a new app, when you tap on an app, how much memory does that need? Does it going to need 5.6 gigabytes? Well, I've done some looking at the numbers as well. And let's look at those now. So if you're running a social media app, Twitter, X, as it's now called, WhatsApp, Blue Sky, Gmail, you're looking about half a gigabyte. That's these are all very uh, rough numbers, half a gigabyte, some of them are a bit lower, 400 megabytes there for WhatsApp. And of course, it depends on what you've been doing on the app, scrolling, passing, if someone sent you lots of media, if someone sent you just text, it's different kinds of uses, but you're going to need about half a gig. So if you go back to those uh, devices we were looking at, you know, starting something like Twitter and then WhatsApp and then Gmail isn't going to really stress these devices out at all, even when you've only got 2.3 gigs free. Now, of course, if you've got a device that's 
only comes with three gigabytes or four gigabytes of RAM, then already when you start starting up these apps, then you're gonna put pressure on the RAM and it's gonna to have to do something different. Google Photos, half a gig when you're just browsing through your photos. Uh, it went up to a gig when I started editing a photo and Adobe Photoshop Mobile was a gig when I was editing a photo. So you can see that media, multimedia stuff does take up more uh, RAM and so that's going to be a consequence. If you do this kind of stuff a lot, then that's going to put pressure on the RAM. Chrome, of course, is an absolute killer for Android phones. I currently have seven tabs open on my phone. I've reduced that down, kind of pared it out. So I don't need that site open anymore. I don't need that site open anymore. But kind of Chrome on its own is going to take a gig. And then a rough kind of, you know, number, 250 megabytes, 300 megabytes, 400 megabytes. Sometimes it really does depend on what website you open. But for every tab you open, it's going to crank up the memory usage. So when I had seven tabs open, it was 3.8 gigabytes. So 3.8 gigabytes. So all of my RAM could be very easy, just used up by, by running Chrome. So that's why Android needs the ability to be able to um, kick out these different apps. And also Chrome has got the ability to put app, uh, tabs to sleep, which means their memory can be freed up uh, as well. Gaming, a lot of gaming goes on on Android phone. But again, depends on what you're doing. If you're running Minecraft, you can need over a gig of RAM, something more simple like Solitaire, Offline games, Snake.io, seven, eight hundred megabytes. If you go for something big, then uh, Genshin Impact, two gigs of RAM. So you know that's why if you're already starting with some low-end devices, only got two, or three or four gigs to start with a physical RAM, even before you load the operating system and everything into it, and then you want to load two gigs of a game in there, well, you see that's going to cause problems. And then what about AI? So if you're running just the AI apps, because there's a lot of this done in the cloud, it's not going to use that much. So 300 megabytes almost for ChatGPT, 400 megabytes for Perplexity. Starry AI, which is an image generator, 800 megabytes. It's dealing with media, so the, you know the numbers went up. Now the point is local AI running like Gemma Nano on some Pixel phones that we mentioned can take between three and six gigabytes of RAM. And performance reasons, they permanently stay in RAM. They can't be kicked out. And this is something Google did specifically for the 9 Pro. And when you're using it on other devices, it will load it out and then kick it out uh, if there's not enough RAM available. See the Android Authority article, uh, which quotes Gemini Nano, eats up to almost three gigabytes of RAM, whether you use it or not. And that's on the 9 Pro. And there's a link in the description to that article. They give you some more numbers to look at how that happens. So if the device you're using has local AI features, not cloud AI, but local AI features, that can use a significant chunk of your memory. Okay, so let's answer the question, what are my recommendations? Well, the first thing I want to say is don't use RAM size as something to overspend. If you have a budget for a phone, if you know what you can afford, don't go into debt or or something because you say, oh, I want to have 16 gigabytes. Don't do that, okay? Just spend wisely. But once you're choosing the specification, four gigabytes, of course, will work because there are devices that have been launched for that, but you are going to find apps restarting really quite frequently when you do that. You might be able to hold one or two uh, you know, in RAM and then they're going to restart. Eight gigabytes is really the working minimum for today in 2025. 12 gigabytes is really the sweet spot and 16 gigabytes is really for power users or for devices where there is a local AI running. So we talked about the Pixel. So in that situation, having extra memory is really, really important because some big chunk of it is being used up for those AI features. So AI features are really the killer thing that are going to make the RAM usage uh, much, much higher because we're not just talking about, oh, I loaded up this app and it took even a gigabyte, we're now thinking about these large language models that can take three, four, five, six uh, gigabytes, depending on the feature. So if local AI is the thing that's going to be a big part of your usage, then make sure you get more RAM. Okay, so there you have it. Love to hear how much RAM do you have in your uh, current Android smartphone and kind of how much do you want in your next one? What would be your dream kind of device? What are you happy with? You know, let me know. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below.
Okay, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. But if you like these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next.